Do you have what it takes to design an evil warlord's darkest dungeon? Do you have a flair for the evil lair? Do you have creative adventure prevention tactics? Dungeon decorator might just be right up your alley. Your job will be to create a cozy dungeon for an up-and-coming evil overlord. Dungeon Decorators is a competitive tile drafting strategy game for two to four players. In the box, you'll find the instructions, the draft board, the score track, a red and blue bag that we will put all of our dungeon tiles in, mimic tokens, arcane architect tokens, generic dungeon tiles, starting dungeon tiles, player pawns, and player tracking cubes, point chits, gold boss goals, and blue boss goals, some rule reminder card, decoration goals, shape goals, and the player boards. So to set these bags up, you shuffle the 120 dungeon tiles, take 20 out, put them in the box, put 50 into each draw bag. Then you take the three hourglass tokens, add them to the red second bag, and this will be used in the second half of the game. Next, choose your interior design company. Villainous Interiors Inc., Two Shovels and a Dwarf, Deathly Designs, or Giant Pulsating Brain Realty. These each correspond to a colored uh, pawn and score tracking cube, so the rest can go back in the box. Hand out the rule reminder cards, put the cubes on the score track, and put the pawns randomly on the draft board. Each player starts with a starting dungeon tile. Shuffle both decks of boss goals and flip up one of each. Deal out three decoration and three shape goals, and you only have to keep four cards, any combination of decoration and shapes. You, at early game, want to maybe avoid decoration goals that are four items. They're high point cards, but it's going to take you quite a few turns, and if you can get more points, that's usually better. I have all high counting cards, so that's cool. I'm throwing away two decoration goals. All right, so we populate our dungeon board. Four tiles. To set up, draw four tiles out of the draw bag. They get arranged in spaces one to four from the lowest number to the highest. The position of the shapes on the front of the tile will tell you the shape that's on the back. This one here has a 90 degree hallway and has orange flooring, which you can see on the front too. And then the next one here also has orange flooring, but is a three-way hallway. Other tiles will have the assistant symbols or uh, stars on the corner, which if you flip over, there's a star in the hallway. This is a quick example of all of the different dungeon tiles that are available and the different room tiles. These all matter for scoring at the end of the game. Your shape and decoration goal will be your first scores, but then you also add the following. Three points for every star on the dungeon side. If it's flipped on the decoration side, stars don't count. You'll get points for different colors. You'll get points for the most common color. And again, only the colored ones that are facing up will count at the end of the game. Each boss card will then give more points for certain goals, so make sure to read each of the flipped up cards that you get in each game. Placing tiles and decorations. You can't place a tile, a decoration tile, that causes a passageway to dead end into a decoration. There are a number of examples here in the rulebook. Your placement of a new tile must always be connected to another hallway, so you'll have one long hallway throughout your whole dungeon. You are allowed to place a dungeon tile that causes a passage to dead end into a wall on another tile, but you do still have to have that hallway connecting. To play around, if there are any tiles left on the draw board from the previous round, they get put into the box and are removed. You draw four new tiles from the current bag, place them in low to high numerical order, decoration side up on the four spots on the draft board. When your blue bag runs out, continue drawing from the red bag. If you draw an hourglass, set it aside and fill the draft board. If you draw the third hourglass tile, the game ends immediately and scoring begins. The goblin sapper symbol allows you to take a generic hallway tile. Uh, you could also use it as a room instead of a hallway. Burrow Bros will let you draw two tiles immediately from the bag, and then you choose one from among the three tiles you have to place on your board. 
The Arcane Architect token will allow you at any time during your build phase to rearrange your dungeon slightly. If you discard the token, you can rotate or move one tile in your dungeon. You can't swap tiles. You can remove it and place it on your board to then be able to place it later if that's what you want to do. You cannot flip it to its other side to use it as the opposite of what you used before. You can play multiple Arcane Architect tokens in a turn, so temporarily disconnecting things in your dungeon, but it must be re-complete and all hallways connected by the end of your turn. The last one is the Mimic token. You can use the Mimic token once to change one of the green decoration circles into whatever decoration that you want. Once your Mimic token has been discarded and you've used it, it reverts back to the green circle and you would need a new Mimic token in order to be able to do anything with it again. If ever you turn in a shape or decoration goal, you draw back up to four cards in your hand. And that is it. Thank you for watching. I will post another video uh, linked here for just a playthrough if you want to see some tips and tricks in action.